Let's talk about the basics of the Math 1 and Math 2 tests. They're both scored the same from 200 to 800, and we'll have more to say about scoring in the next video. You're given an hour to complete each test, so an hour for Math 1, an hour for Math 2. Remember the way with, it works with the subject tests. You, it's an hour per test. Every test is an hour. That means when you go to your testing day, you can take up to three tests at once. You could do Math 2 and Chemistry and History on one day, or you can just take one or two. Doesn't matter, uh, you choose, but you do have that option. I forgot to mention in the previous video, it's not really a good idea to do both tests, so I don't think it's a good idea to go to testing center, do math one, and then do math two. I think you pick one and you do your best on that one test. Because if you do well on math two, the math one test doesn't really mean much. So pick one and stick with it. But you do have the option of doing up to three tests at once. Each test is an hour. Each math one and math two test is going to have 50 questions, all multiple choice. Both tests are in order of difficulty. So the questions get, on average, harder as you go on in the test. So number one is generally going to be pretty easy. Number 50, generally going to be pretty hard. The blue book in the answer key will actually show you what percent of students got which questions right. So you can actually see how hard, in a really precise quantitative way, how hard certain questions are compared to others. And that's interesting to look at. So check that out in the answer key of the blue book questions after, of course, you've done the test. Both tests give you some reference information. They give you the exact same reference information. You can see them right here. It'll be at the beginning of your test. Volume of a cone, volume of a sphere, volume of a pyramid, and surface area of a sphere. Let's just look at the instructions of these tests very briefly. I just want to point out a couple of differences. One I already mentioned before. Uh, the only angle measure used on this test is degree measure. That's true for Math 1. Whereas for Math 2, you will sometimes have to choose whether you're in radian or degree mode. And actually, I think that's the only big difference between these instructions. I recommend you read the instructions of the test you're taking before you uh, take the test, just so you don't have to do that during the test time. A few notes just to point out. I'm not going to read this through. Um, the first part says you, sometimes you have to round. If you get 2.83, then 2.8 is going to be your answer. Uh, scientific or graphing calculator will be necessary for answering some but not all of the questions. So you do need to have a calculator. And if you're at all comfortable with using a graphing calculator, I really recommend you use that either for Math 1 but especially for Math 2 because it's just very useful, as you'll see, on certain questions. Figures are typically drawn to scale unless, told, unless you're told otherwise. Like if it says figure not drawn to scale, fine. Just goes with the general geometric tip of don't just look at a geometric figure and start making assumptions about, let's say, this side, oh, it looks like it's the same as this side, so I'll call those congruent. The only way you can make that judgment is if the problem tells it to you. And it's especially more problematic if the, the problem says figure not drawn to scale. That means you've got to be extra careful because they've probably drawn the picture to trick you. Uh, the domain of all functions is the reals, and then reference information can be found. So no other major differences, just that little bit about decree and radian measure. Again, I recommend you read these instructions when you get a chance, just so you don't have to read them again. All right, let's talk about grading, scoring, and guessing. 